Okay, this video tutorial looks at the mathematical strand of functions and graphs uh, and more specifically we're going to focus our understanding on composite functions. Okay, so I guess we first need to look at what a composite function is. So basically a composite function converts uh, a variable, which is usually x, into a combination of two functions. So we can see here that uh, we've got a function f of x and a function g of x. Now, um, basically, if we've got f o g here, so that means that we get the g of x and then we put our answer for the g of x into the f of x. So f o g basically means follow on from. Okay, so we've got that over here. Oops. following on from G. So F O G means following on from G. Um, oops, I'll get red. Following on from G. Um, if you were gonna swap that around and you'd go um, following on from F, it would probably be G O F. Okay, so this is following on from F. So following f and this one is following g all right um i'll explain what that kind of means but essentially we're taking one function and we're putting it into another function to then give us an overall uh, function we're looking at but i'll do some examples and hopefully that makes sense so you can see here that we've got uh fog that i was just talking about so following on from g uh, and if you look at this kind of machine here we take our g function, okay, which is this one here. So we put our x, x goes in to our machine, and it creates our g function. All right. Then we put our g function into our f function, and we come out with our new function. So we're getting a combination. So f plus g um, gives us, or not really plus, it's more times. So let's rewrite that f times g all right, will give us the f function of the g of x function. Okay, If we want to look at it algebraically, um, this bit works really well for us all right, because we have our f of x. All right, so it says f of x is x to the power of 4, but we're actually going to replace the x with a g of x first. So this now becomes f of g of x becomes, instead of x, we've now got 2x plus 3 because that's our g value. All right, so remember, g of x was 2x plus 3. So we've now actually just put worked out the, G, uh, the gx function and we've put it into our fx function. So we've replaced our original variable of x all right, with our variable for g. And again, that's for FOG, so following on from G. If we were to do it the other way, all right, it would be following from X. Uh, and that example is here. All right, so if we had our G of X, and we knew that that was 2X plus 3, but we had to actually replace our X with whatever the F of X function was. So we would have G bracket F of X, would be to, instead of having just x, we'd go x to the power of 4, because that's what our f function was, plus 3. Okay, and that's where we end up with this answer here, and that was our first answer there. All right, so we're just replacing one function with another, basically. So the x of one function with another function. I'll do a couple more examples, um, and hopefully that'll help. So let's have a look at, uh, example. this is our example six, we're going to have a look at A, all right, and we've got uh, a function of f, so f of x is 2x plus 1, g of x is 3 take 4x, now what we want to do, f o g is following on from g, all right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get our g of x function, which is this one here, all right, as it's written, so we need to now go 3 take 4x, all right, so we're putting our, instead of just normal x, it's now 3 take 4x, 
So we're basically putting whatever's been circled here, we are now substituting into where our x value is there. Okay, and that's what this line, once we've done that, that's what this line is. Okay, it's, it's the f of x function. So this is the f of x function, but instead of having the x here, we've now replaced whatever g was. Okay, so we've now put our other function in. We then multiply out. Okay, that gives us our 6. That gives us our negative 8x. All right, we click the like terms, obviously, plus 1 and 6, make 7, and then we've worked it out from there. If we're going to do the other one, the other way, all right, we start with our g, all right, our g function, which is 3 take 4x. Let's use a different color just uh, to spice things up. So we'll use green. So we've got our g function. Now, remember that all we're doing is we're now going to put our f function in this particular example. So we get our f of x, which is 2x plus 1. That's what I've just circled. And you can't quite see it, but I'll circle it again. So this now goes in here. All right. So we now have our g function. So our next step is having our g function, but we're actually going to replace our x. So if we've got originally g was 3 take 4x, where there's the x value here, we're now going to replace that with the function for f. All right, and that's what's basically happened in this spot here. So what was originally an x, or 4x actually, now becomes 4 bracket 2x plus 1. Again, we expand the brackets here and here. Using distributive law, welcome back year 8. That gives us this. We click like terms. Welcome year 7. And we've now got our equation. Okay, so we're basically just substituting something in for our original x value. Okay, depending on how we do it. Okay, so going on from our previous example, uh, this top sentence up here basically says, probably in a better way than I was trying to in the previous example, that we can basically substitute an expression into another function. All right, so there's some algebraic examples here where if we've got the function f of x, that means that we've got 2x plus 1, then f of triangle must be 2 triangle plus 1, or f of 3 take 4x equals 2 lots of 3 take 4x plus 1. We're basically substituting in, all right, whatever's in the brackets next to the f, into where our variable, variable sorry, would be. All right, so if we're going to do something similar here, uh, in example 7, we've got f of x is 6x take 5, all right, and we've got g of x is x squared plus x. And we want to go gof, okay? Um, basically, we want to work out gof of minus 1. So we go gf of minus 1. Right now, if we're just going to substitute um, this 6x take 5 into here, okay, which is basically our f function, all right, so we're just looking at, if I write it next to it, we're trying to work out uh, f of negative 1 first. And we're just going to substitute 6 times negative 1, take 5. Negative 6, take 5, equals negative 11. We've now got, I'll make that 11 a little bit easier for you to see. We've now got f of negative 1 being negative 11, okay? So now all we're going to do is we're going to substitute that negative 11 into our g function, which again comes from up here. So we end up with, that's where we get our negative 11 squared plus negative 11, all right, which becomes, there's a line in here, which is 121, take 11, which therefore gives us 110. Okay, so we're basically working out what... Um, GOF is, all right, and then substituting in. Okay. If we're going to do something similar in our second example over here, B, all right, F following on from F. So again, we need to work out F of O to begin with. Okay, so that's 6 times 0, take 5, which is just minus 5. That's the working out here. Now all we need to do is just chuck negative 5 into the f of o again, all right, 
Um, so we're just going to look at our f function. Our normal f function is 6x take 5, but now we've got negative 5 because that's what we got from our original up here, our first step, which is just 6 times negative 5 take 5, which is negative 30 take 5, negative 35. So we're basically working out one function by substituting, getting our answer, then putting it into the other function. Okay. Okay, uh, I'd like to have a go at these practice questions. Um, please feel free to pause the video. Once you think you know the answers, continue the video and we'll see how you went. Okay, so I've got our answers down the bottom, but uh, I'm going to work through them and show you how we actually get there. All right. So we're looking for FOG of X. All right, now G of X is equal to 1 take X. All right, and f of g of x is equal to two lots of one take x plus three. All right. If I expand this out using the distributive law, I get two take two x plus three. I can now collect the like terms of two and three, and that will give me five take two x, which happens to be our answer. Pretty good. The next one, we've now got g o f. So I can write g of the function of x is equal to 1 take 2x plus 3, because all I've done, normally g of x is just 1 take x, but I've actually replaced that x with the f of x function, becomes 1 take 2x take 3, which is negative 2x take 2. Okay, once we collect these like terms, we end up with take two. And again, there's our answer. With the last one, I'm looking for FOG of minus three. Um, now, I know from a previous question A that, oops, I haven't written that correctly. I know that FOG gave me an answer of five take two lots of X, but I'm now going instead of an x I'm going to have a minus 3 so this is going to become 5 minus 2 lots of minus 3 which is 5 plus 6 because minus 2 and minus 3 makes 6 which is therefore 11 okay um, if you didn't want to do it that way you could have substituted g of minus 3 and ended up with 1 take negative 3 which equals 4 then you'd substitute that into our f of negative 3, which would become 2 lots of 4 plus 3, which is 8 plus 3, which again is 11. Uh, and you'd get the same answer.